Hi guys, it's Ben here, back again with another video. It's the end of the group stage of the World Cup, but I'm sure you're here for the transfer rumours, stories, gossip, whatever words you want to use. There's been more transfer news today, there always is, especially with Liverpool. Let's get straight into it and let's start with Alison Becker. Um, the goalkeeper rumours just won't go away uh, and Alison is still going to be in the news every day until he finally signs a new deal at Roma or joins another club, probably the latter. Uh, and now another club seems to have seriously entered the fray and it is Chelsea. Um, Thibaut Courtois' contract obviously is nearly up, they are going to be on the lookout for a new keeper whether it's this summer or next probably this summer so they don't lose Courtois on a free um, I believe they've only got one year left so they're looking around and Allison is you know apparently picking their interest um, so Marca uh, in Spain are claiming that Chelsea are now in front of both Liverpool and Real Madrid in the race to sign the player who looks set to leave Roma um, the Blues are set to have held initial talks over a deal um, obviously Maurizio Sarri is likely to be a new manager and he must have identified Alisson who will know from Syria as, uh, as the guy that he wants. So there you go, Chelsea are now the bookies favourites as well. I've had a look on Skybet, Chelsea are 11 to 10 to sign him so that's pretty much 50-50. Um, they, they do think he will leave Roma, it's 1 to 5. Liverpool now out to 8 to 1 so you, I mean if the bookies are to be believed uh, you can pretty much forget about Alisson joining and Marker also think that uh, it's more likely that he's going to end up in London rather than Merseyside. Um, so it seems to be between Chelsea and Madrid, really, in terms of who gets Alisson. So there you go, that's the latest on him. The dream that some of you are having about signing Alisson might be coming to an end, and he may well be lining up against us in the Premier League next season. Speaking of players that Liverpool are unlikely to get, uh, Marco Asensio apparently is not for sale. Uh, again, reports in Spain, this time Sport, uh, are saying that they sent a clear message to Liverpool um, the guy is just simply not for sale. Uh, we've been linked with him in recent days. Um, even He was even asked about the move the other day and he kind of said, that, let's wait till after the World Cup. But Guillaume Balague said that we hadn't even put a bid in and that we weren't going to put a bid in. Um, you've heard whispers here and there that, that there is a bit of interest, as there would be with all top clubs for such a good player, but it looks like he's not going to be sold. So, Alisson eh, eh, and Asensio, eh, eh, it seems, unfortunately. Um, Let's look at outgoings from Liverpool. Danny Ings, um, it's pretty much Ings' watch at the moment because we don't know where he's going to end up. The bookies don't know, we don't know. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to be Burnley, according to the Mirror. Apparently they want to bring Jay Rodriguez back um, to the fold there. They've already got about three or four decent strikers, so they're not going to be you know, over oversubscribed there if they can help it. So yeah, Danny Ings, unlikely to get back to Burnley, according to the Mirror. Let's see where he ends up. He's been linked with the likes of Palace. Um, West Ham always seems to be linked with our crap players, or our, our, I shouldn't say crap, our players at um, Deadwood basically. Um, so there you go, Danny Ings, we don't know. Another player that could be on the way out, Marco Grujic, apparently Cardiff want to loan him again. He didn't start every single game for them last season, he wasn't exactly a mainstay, but he did help them get promoted to the Premier League and Neil Warnock it seems wants to maintain that familiarity in his midfield and yeah Marco Gruich it'll be interesting to see how he fares with a with a fairly regular s slot in a Premier League team he's not going to get anywhere at Liverpool maybe even ever so yeah interesting to see how he gets on at Cardiff should he go there um, back to incomings although last year's incoming Dominic Solanke finally a fee has been agreed oh I completely forgot this was a thing remember the Danny Ings tribunal a few years ago with Burnley um, I remember Daniel Sturridge had one when he went to Chelsea as well for Man City uh, Dominic Slanky was uh, out of contract when he joined Liverpool, uh, which means if you're under the age of 23, I think it is, you have to pay uh, a, a transfer fee regardless. And yeah, Dominic Slanky, a fee has been agreed. Liverpool wanted it to be around three million last summer. Chelsea wanted it closer to 10 million. Seems like they've met in the middle somewhere, and Slanky, that that's all sorted now. So no need for anyone else to get involved. Um, and Klopp's been kind of speaking about Dominic Slanky, saying that he's been the master of his own destiny. Yeah, he's, he's a good player, he likes what he's seen, but he needs to improve. I really don't know whether he's going to be a Liverpool player this season, uh, in terms of will he be, he'll, will, he'll be on our books obviously, but will he be on, out on loan or will he stay around? I think he'll stick around. I still think there's a role for him in the squad, just not maybe as the first attacking player you bring on when you need a goal, which at times he was last season. So leave a comment with your thoughts on Slanky. Would you like to see him stick around or do you want to see him 
go away to another Premier League club and get some experience, get some gold under his belt and then come back the following season firing on all cylinders. It's an interesting debate. I like to keep around as an option, but then do you need him and Origi? Do you give up on Origi because he's had quite a lot of chances from the start and he's not exactly lit up the Bundesliga with Wolfsburg? Tell me, who do you prefer, Solanke or Origi? Vote there and let me know your comments. That pretty much sums up the transfers. It's pretty much been a quiet day in terms of transfers. Everyone's been focusing on the World Cup. Um, now, there's a day off of the World Cup tomorrow, so I imagine the papers are going to be absolutely inundated with news. I'm going to be at a Liam Gallagher gig, so I'm not going to have to do a video tomorrow on any, any breaking news. Um, but maybe it'll be a busier day. Um, but yeah, England finished second in their group. I'm not sure how many of you even care about England. In fact, I asked people on Instagram earlier whether they care or not, and most people seem to say no. So. You know, I'm going to be talking about Panama for UK, but England finished second. Trent Alexander-Arnold did make his debut, his, his or his first competitive um, start for England, which is awesome um, in the World Cup for him. I thought he played pretty well. Some of his set pieces didn't quite come off, but it looked like there were routines where you know it, it needed to be a low drive to, towards the near post rather than him just completely miscooing the ball and it not clearing the first man, which you know was often the case with corners. Um, but I thought his forward ones are really good and I thought he had a good um, connection with Loftus-Cheek as well down that right hand side so encouraging signs for Trent, obviously I think Trippier will come back in for him but pleased to see him get that experience under his belt even though they did lose by that Adnan Yenazai goal to nil. Sadio Mane is coming home, um, obviously feel really bad for him, they went out on yellow cards which is such a shame um, but yeah Sadio Mane did get a goal in, in this campaign but yeah, Senegal losing 1-0 to Colombia means they're coming home. So Mane and Salah both home early. Obviously Firmino uh, sticking around with Brazil as they are in the last 16 where they'll face Mexico. And I have them still. I picked them before the tournament and I still have them as the favourites. Even though they have to face probably Belgium in the quarterfinals, which will not be easy. And then you've got a semi-final with maybe France or whoever. But that's not going to be too tough, you know, rather than in something like Germany. And then the final against Spain or maybe England, who knows? Uh, or Croatia are looking good. What do you think of the World Cup so far? I think it's been brilliant. I think these last four days where um, we've had scenarios where it's been so close heading into the last round and there's been implications in, in both games leading to so much drama. The Portugal-Iran game was amazing. So obviously Spain and Morocco at the same time. The drama there was unbelievable. Germany career was unbelievable. Um, obviously today with Senegal going out was, was dramatic, even if it wasn't as fascinating. Argentina, Nigeria was phenomenal. Rojo's late goal. I've really enjoyed these last few days in particular. I, I thought the first few days were poor. Then it started to bubble up a bit. We saw some great games, and then but now it's really coming into life. And I'm looking forward to at least willing it down to the quarterfinals, um, and then it's just a shootout from there. Really, I think it is tied, but Brazil are still the favourites. For me, um, I think that's everything today. All the transfers have been covered. All the World Cup stuff has been covered. Um, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain posted on his social media earlier that he's uh, rehabilitating now since his, his injury against Man City. He's back uh, in the gym working hard to get back fit. That's great to see. Glad he's still being very positive about things. Um, and other than that, no fresh concerns, no fresh injuries. Liverpool uh, kick off their pre-season campaign against Chester. Next Saturday, a game I'll be at. Now, that's going to be the same time as England's quarter-final um, if they get there against either Sweden or Switzerland. So it'll be interesting what the turnout's like and whether they might even move the kick-off or whether anyone even cares. Um, I know I'll be at the game regardless, and I'm looking forward to seeing the Reds back in town. Anyway, that is all. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you are new, we are uploading regularly at the moment, and we are planning to continue in that vein, especially with the pre-season looming and the transfer season kicking into gear. I will see you next time.